that's still struggling to get on. So I guess we should just start. Yeah, we are. We are actually broadcasting as we speak. Hi, everybody. Um, super excited. Sorry for the delay. We were having some technical issues, but all is good. We are fixed. We are missing one of our uh, participants, uh, Janet. She's trying to jump on right now. I wanted to say hi. We have like 120 people watching us right now, which is excited. Let's see. I think most of them are women. I think most of them are women. There's a few guys sprinkled in there. So welcome, welcome, everybody. My name is Tanya Osborne. I'm the director of events for Women Grow, and I am so honored to be moderating this panel, uh, The Future is women-led. I prefer the future is women-led. I'm not a fan of the female thing, but we'll take it where we are. Um, so if, if all of our guests uh, could introduce themselves, let's start with you, Jill. Would you like to give us, introduce yourself? Yeah. Oh, Hold on. <laughs> That's not good. <laughs> Janet, can you mute your phone until we figure it out? Do I just okay. need to get out of uh, now? I now it's saying everybody's unable to subscribe, and it has me. But Janet, are you able to mute? I don't your know. Phone? <laughs> Janet, you might want to log out and then try to come back in. Yeah, that's what I did. Or at least mute <laughs> while you figure it out. All right. So, Yes. Jill. Hi, guys. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. Um, my name is Jill Ellsworth. I am the founder and CEO of Willow Industries. Willow Industries developed the technology for microbial decontamination with cannabis. And I'm really excited to be here to talk about females and cannabis and how we can continue to support each other within the industry. Thank you. Thank you. Wanda. Oh my goodness. Well, hello folks. Um, well, this is exciting. Lots of people are listening in today. This is always exciting to me because, you know, we're in a world right now where we're starting to see um, women's power grow. And we don't do that in a vacuum. It's not that we become political leaders or we become business leaders or we become um, leaders in um, education or medicine or those types of things. It all happens together. And we are finally seeing here at a time um, at a very, in a very young country, at a very teeny tiny bit of our history, um, women are now becoming um, the, uh, we have more graduates um, from four-year universities that are, are women. We have more graduates um, from law school that are women. We have more graduates um, than, than uh, more women than men that are graduating um, from the, uh, from law school. Uh, and more and more we're seeing that female leadership or women's leadership is becoming the power that we're looking for. Because quite frankly, um, 400 years into our history, uh, you know, the way that we've done it in the past has clearly not been effective. When you have such a wealth gap, when you have such a power gap, when you have um, <laughs> 55 laws on the books that have something to do with women's bodies and zero that have to do with men's. So, yes, I'm throwing that in there. Um, <laughs> it's This is a very, very good time in our history to be a woman and to be a woman in power and to be a woman boss or to be in your way to getting there. So this is an exciting thing. I'm happy to be here with Banks and with all of you. So, yeah, let's do this. So, Wanda, can you tell people, like, what you're because oh, yeah. you underestimate oh, yourself I? a lot you know <laughs> so can you tell them who you are in the industry yeah, yeah. so um i am the first african-american legally licensed in america to own a dispensary a cultivation facility and an edible company we've been doing this now for well over a decade um <laughs> I, I mean it's it's been an, an incredible uh, journey for me because when we got into this, 
it wasn't because of money or because of business. It was because of social justice. We wanted to put a black face on dispensary and cannabis operations because of the amount of people that were being arrested for simple possession, which was 800,000 people a year um, about a decade ago. It's still about 600,000 people now. But a decade ago, 85% of those people were black and brown, mostly boys between the ages of 17 and 24. And we were targeting those people to be um, America's slave labor class in privatized prison systems. It became very personal to me when my brother became a slave for 10 years. So for us um, to put a black face on cannabis 10 years ago when it wasn't about money, it was about being arrested. Um, and the idea of going to jail was very real back then for anybody that was black or brown that was stepping into, or white, that was stepping into this industry. Um, and fortunately for me, my background is in politics. I've worked for Barack Obama. I worked for uh, Congressman Jared Polis at the time, who is now Governor Jared Polis. So when you have senators on speed dial, I felt um, much more emboldened to take this step into cannabis because they weren't going to be able to make a criminal out of myself and my husband. So that's been our journey. Fantastic. And I don't know if Janet can hear us. Janet, are you there? Can you hear us? I'm going to take that as a no. Okay. So just a little bit about myself. Uh, I represent today. I'm here representing Women Grow. My brand is actually called the Canadiva. Uh, we are just a women empowerment community driven organization here based out of New York. Uh, but at my role with Women Grow, I used to be their market leader. I used to handle their tri-state area uh, market where we did uh, networking events on a large scale every month and uh, really just to build this community, which I think women do the best is kind of feed off of one another as far as sharing best practices, sharing resources, forming alliances. So it was a really fantastic um, opportunity for me to get into the space um, and a really just a great way to just a great entry to cannabis for myself. So um, I'm just curious, uh, I know Wanda, how you got into the, into the industry, but Jill, how did you get into cannabis? Yeah, certainly. So I am a registered dietitian. I have a master's in food science and nutrition, and I came from the food and beverage industry. I previously owned a cold pressed juice company and a beverage distribution business. And I was looking at my next, you know, entrepreneurial endeavor and started looking at kind of the compliance and safety of requirements of cannabis. And I was looking at it from the lens of the food and beverage industry and seeing that, you know, there wasn't a requirement to essentially, you know, have this step in the process to ensure that the product was clean before it went to the dispensaries. Yes, we have to compliance test, but you know, what is, what is a solution for a cultivator um, that could ensure their product is clean, it passes testing and it's safe for consumers. So I developed essentially a kill step for for cannabis. And that is, you know, the last step in the process to ensure the product is safe and clean for consumers. So, you know, okay. really fun to, to pave the path and, and bring in, you know, my knowledge from the food and beverage industry. Fantastic. So, so most of the people that are watching and we're at like 165, um, most of the people that are watching are trying to get into this industry. Um, so, what would you say would be, what is your perception or perspective rather of women in cannabis? Are we, are we really great with inclusion? Are we not so great? What, do you, what would you say to a person who's looking at it from a woman lens? Um, Jill, we can do that with you. Let's start with you. Certainly. I, you know, when I started this business five years ago, I, and I'm sure Wanda can, I mean, she's been in it much longer than me. There definitely were not a lot of women in the industry. It was, it was very male dominated, male led. And so, you know, I certainly felt a little out of place. I know that's changed a little bit over, over these five years that I've been involved. Um, but you know, there's there's so much potential and possibility for women really becoming leaders in this industry. Um, I you know I see so many more women taking leadership roles at cultivations and at extraction companies and different technology companies. And on the technology side, there aren't a lot of women-led companies. So you know, continue right. to champion for that. Um, 
So, yeah. What's your vantage point, Wanda? What do you, what do, you, how do you think cannabis rates against other industries when it comes to the presence of women and the inclusivity of women in the industry? So initially, to be honest with you, back in 2010, there were a lot more women um, in the industry. As a matter of fact, a lot of the women that I came up with, um, a lot of the people that owned dispensaries back then uh, were women. And why? Because it was all about caregiving. So in Colorado, the way that we went to legal was um, we've been legal in Colorado to sell medicinal marijuana since 1996, right? Um, So, or 2000, I'm sorry, California was 1996. So that was a system of caregivers. So this was women that were literally growing cannabis for their, you know, sisters that had can- for sisters that had cancer, for um, all the things that they believed that cannabis could help with, for pain, for sleep, um, menopausal sy- uh, symptoms, um, and it was a lot of women owners here in Colorado uh, back then. Nobody cared, and, and one of the comments to make it short is nobody cared when our businesses were worth a million dollars. Yeah, let the women run it. Nobody cares when our businesses were $5 million. Well, then it became interesting. That's a cute little hobby. Let the women run it. When we got to be 15 and $20 million, all of a sudden, all of the guys came in and were all the guys with the Harvard degrees. I'm not picking on just Harvard, but the the Ivy League degrees that work for Coca-Cola that have done all these big things were like, you know, you women need to move out of the way now because we're getting ready to do real business. And you guys um, don't need to be doing this because it's not about care. It's about money. Um, and that has given birth um, <laughs> to some very large firms that are in a hell of a lot of debt today. Um, so, so, and unfortunately, so many women were pushed out of the industry. So, and, and don't quote me on this, but I believe in Colorado back in like 2010, 2011, something ridiculous, like 35% of businesses were run by women um, uh, or more. It was, it was a big number. It was a great big number. And women ownership in Colorado was, was large. Uh, fast forward to today, if you look at any of the numbers, the numbers in cannabis have dropped considerably um, to where women are at. And we're probably about where most corporations are right now for women ownership um, and women led companies. Um, We may be a tad bit higher, but not much. And once again, it's because all of a sudden, now that we have $30 million, you know, valuations on things, well, you know, those women aren't just prepared to run these things, which is baloney. I will I will actually co-sign to that because I see in New York, because that's where I'm at, that when we were a grassroots type driven community where all of the women were doing things uh, on a smaller scale, like you say, in the caregiver role, you know, um, it was more women. And then as we got, you know, more MSOs on the scene, the it did change a bit. You yep. know, it's not discouraging, but it, it should be where, and you're right, a lot of the executives that I've met don't have a cannabis background. Nope. They have a background in something else mm-hmm. that put them in alignment for a cannabis gig. Yep. So for if, if I was saying to someone who's looking to get into cannabis, use the strengths that you have and try and get into the industry that way instead of reinventing the wheel. Mm-hmm. But it's just to be aware of that, the fact that this has become big business. This is big have business. To operate. Yeah. This you is have big to operate business. The way big business operates. And that's know? exactly where we are today. And I think. To be honest with you, with where we are, I, w- there's a person here that's asked for women in their 20s that recently graduated from college looking to join the cannabis industry. Um, yeah, jump in, but jump in in the same way that you would have jumped into GE 10 years ago. Or, you know, come, you know what, ladies, come smart, come armed, come knowing your stuff. Don't sit in front of me for an interview and, you know, say things that, you know, don't make any sense that you haven't done your research here. Um, Don't come in here assuming that because I run a cannabis business that I'm stoned from seven in the morning to, you you know, midnight or that you're going to come to work for me and be stoned from (laughs) seven in the morning to, to, to midnight. Now I will say this, the caveat that I do have with the people that work for me is I do believe in cannabis as medicine. So in the same way that I believe that somebody can go to work because you have an injured hip today and you took some Percocet before you came to work, right? Um, If you took, and I don't know what the grams are on Percocet, but if you took a little bit of Percocet to help with your pain, 
and you're good and you can still talk and function and be a, an, an active um, you know, member of the workforce, then by all means come to work. If you take you know, 300 milligrams of Percocet because you know, you've completely blown out your back and you can't think straight right now, then take that day off and stay at home, right? Same yes. thing with cannabis as medicine. If you need a little bit of cannabis to get you through those you know, aches and pains um, today as medicine, by all means, and we support that as a business, but don't think that you're gonna roll in here you know, after, you know, taking down, you know, four George <laughs> buddies outside and, you know, coming in, you know, blazed because that's not how we do business. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So let me get back because we can go on tangents and I love it. Um, so as far as resources for women in the industry, what would you, like at one point I could plug My Women Grow Communities were a great resource for great women resource. in the industry. Um, and the only reason we pivoted to digital is because the world we're in right now, but more collaborations were made. And, and I know the Women Grow platform is doing a lot mm -hmm. to still have this digital community. But what resources would you tell women looking to get into the industry? What, where should they position themselves? What should they read? What have you? Wanda, go, you, you start. Um, so once again, like all other things, right, you've got to dig a little bit. Um, women Grow, I mean, for any woman out there, start with Women Grow. And Women Grow has such amazing leadership um, right now. Um, and just women that are, you know, uh, I was going to say grab the bull by the, the horn. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they're doing these amazing things. So that's a good place to start. Start with, you know, normal, understanding the laws and the regulations in your state. If you're political, there is not a, a politician right now that is not discussing cannabis, the ins and the outs, yeah. you know, how cannabis is, we're, we're discussing cannabis and cannabis businesses right now as part of the recovery um, for COVID. So, I mean, it's ingrained in every piece that we do here. So, Grab what you're interested in. If you're a medical professional, understand medicinal cannabis and all of the new things that are coming out about it. Be able to speak about it clearly. If you are a designer or a builder or an architect, understand you know all the new lighting structures and different things that are coming out. Be able to bring that um, enthusiasm to the table because I keep joking, I'm not that old yet, but you know, I'm not touching all of the things that are happening on the street anymore because my job has evolved and I'm doing different things. So when I'm standing in front of a young person that's lighting me up with, I got this idea, I got that idea, and I was at this other show when I saw that, man, that just fills me up. And that's the kind of energy that I want working with me because it makes me excited about an industry that I've been doing for 10 years. So there's so much. Just learn, learn as much as you can. How about you, Joe? What would yeah. you chime in? With? Well, so agree with everything both of you said. I mean, the Women Grow organization obviously is so supportive uh, and a great resource. I mean, I have to be totally honest. I think, you know, having been, I'm essentially newer to the industry, um, you know, five years in, I, I have found it challenging to, to really find women to connect with. And, um, you know, I think like, honestly, we, we could do better as women in this industry to, you know, have other organizations outside of Women Grow to support each other. And um, so that's just something, you know, I think we, we start to think about. But I mean, yes, be knowledgeable when you come in for an interview, like know, know your stuff because that's going to yeah. set you apart, but also bringing skills and education and knowledge from other industries that can really transcend that and be implemented into cannabis is huge. So, and I tell people that all the time, yep. like me personally, I come from sales yep. and events. So yep. I sold financial services, yep. I mean, mutual funds, variable annuities and life insurance for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and lit and also did like events, you know, my friends own nightclubs in the city, what have you. And when Gia, who is the president of Women Grow, asked me to help run a market, as, as besides being a consumer and advocate, that was really the only experience I had in, she was like, you could sell, which means you can get sponsors and B, you know how to put on an event. And ergo, my my role in, in my first cannabis job was really this job. And it was really because I brought the skill sets that I had 
because I, I firmly believe if women know how to sell, yeah. you can do anything. Then and, move- and I know like everyone's afraid of sales jobs and I get it because oh, no. it no sometimes feels like it's going to hurt. It doesn't. And bloom when you're you're planted. You know, this is a great big industry. You know, when I I get so many people say, oh, I want to get into the industry. And I'm like, well, what do you want to do in the industry? Um, I mean, because everything that you can imagine in the liquor industry or the candy industry or hospitality industry, we do here in cannabis. We market, we have websites, we do events, um, we do um, science, we do packaging, we do, I I mean, everything that you can possibly imagine that happens in every other we do finance um you know we're even now doing dei so and i'm looking for a dei specialist to come in and help train for this next um piece that we're doing because all of the things that are happening in corporate america are happening in cannabis so bloom um but just understand the cannabis bent to it when you sit down in front of somebody and you're looking for jobs and i tell people don't reinvent the wheel right right push the one you have yeah push the one you have in this cannabis plane yeah and then you can probably land something that you like you said wanda everything in cannabis exists this is an industry this is big business yep that we need accountants too yeah we need lawyers we need admins no more lawyers no more lawyers no more lawyers (laughs) yeah (laughs) true that (laughs) we do need lawyers bring the lawyers um so what is the biggest change that you would like to see for women in cannabis in the next year. And 2020 is not, we're just skipping 2020. But like in, in the upcoming years, what would you like to see as a change for women in this industry? Go ahead, Jill. Okay. Uh, well, I would see uh, like to Wanda's point and, you know, more men taking these. Uh, executive roles at these larger corporations and MSOs. I mean, I'd like to see women taking over some of those roles. I'd like to see, you know, women moving up that chain and becoming the CEO or the COO or the CFO. I mean, you know, I, my day to day is typically dealing with male CEOs. And there's, there's very few women that I get to deal with on a regular basis. Um, so, I mean, yes, like supporting that and, and seeing that growth there, but then also in kind of is like, how can we continue to develop organizations that um, can support women? How yeah. can we become, you know, a much tighter group in this, like, you know, very, what feels like a small industry. Uh, right. But yeah. So I agree. Go ahead, Wanda. Let me be like really upfront about this, right? I will not do work with a company that does not show me two things, strong women, strong minority um, outlook in your C-suite, in your board of directors, um, and I want to know how you're bringing people into your pipeline. If, and, and I'm going to be flat out honest right now. If someone sends me an invitation to come speak on a panel and I've got five white guys on there, not only am I not going to speak on your panel, but I'm calling you out publicly all about it. Do not come at me with an all white male anything right now. Do not do it. And I mean that as clear as I can be because it is insulting. It is insulting to me that you would even come to me with an all white male panel and expect me to be okay with that. Or even come to me too, if you wanna do work with Simply Pure or you wanna promote Simply Pure or you wanna be my accounting firm or you wanna be my whatever, 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 do not show up on my doorstep with a bunch of white guys. Not that I'm anti-white guys, I'm kind of okay with that, but I will not work with a company that is that blinded in 2020 not to know that it is good business to have a large base of women and minority people as well too. And I'm gonna look, if you've got one woman on there, I'm not happy. If you've got one black person on there, I'm not happy. If you've got one Latina on there, I'm not happy. One means nothing. Show me that you mean to work with people like me and do things that look like me, or you know what? Go talk to someone else because I'm not playing that game anymore. And I need more women in power to play that or to to come up with that type of a stance. Because quite frankly, ladies, we have given guys way too much leeway to be able to run ripshod with their companies and everything else because we don't hold their feet to the fire because we're so determined to oh you know what i'm on the board of so-and-so with all these guys you know what screw that show me that we're bringing in women minority representation because the world is a different place today the world is a different place today that is a true statement oh (laughs) um, that's what happens when you're a boss 
You get to choose. Yeah, your listen, yeah, and I'm like, to, to keeping it in for, for perspective, <laughs> who is, let's say, looking to get into the industry and maybe doesn't have that level of balls, pardon the language, or that level of commitment, just know when you're choosing to work for an organization, you do have the choice to decide where you want to work and what company you want to work with. And knowing how that company presents itself in the industry is going to be huge for you. And, you know, whoever you are looking for work in the industry. Um, but pivoting on that topic, um, as a woman of color in the industry, um, I, it is different. Like I know, cause I, my community is mostly entrepreneurs um, or people just starting. Some are still legacy. Some are trying to do, you know, above the ground type of stuff, but they're still running into challenges, challenges with funding, uh, challenges with opportunities. Um, so Wanda, I, I'm curious about your perspective on being a woman of color entrepreneur in this space, or since most of the people that are watching us are looking for jobs, uh, positioning yourself for an opportunity in the industry or creating your own opportunity as a woman of color, what would you tell that person? You know, it's the same thing, you know, um, you've got to be twice as good. Um, and that's why I'm saying, you know, come with, come with your experience, be damn good at what you do, come with, you know, information as to where you want to go. And even pivoting off of what I've just said, if you find organizations out there that don't have women of color on their C-suite or on their boards, to me, that's an, um, or women or women of color, um, that's an opportunity for you to go knock on the door and be like, hey, I was just over at Banks and your company right now ain't gonna get to do business with anybody else unless you start hiring women and I'm a really good woman for you to start hiring and I'm bringing other women with me. You know, so I mean, that's an opportunity when we don't see women in a place. And sometimes, you know, we need to, you know, I was going to say gently nudge, but knock our, you know, our brethren over the head sometimes to be like, look, you run a good company, you've got a good product, but you're about to hit some major walls right here. Let me help you not get knocked out the way that you're getting ready to. That's a fantastic point. Yeah. <laughs> it's not necessarily an obstacle. It really could present itself as an opportunity. It, it, it absolutely can. And then I got to say this too, ladies, when you get your foot through the door, you never close that door behind you. You fight to make sure that that door is wide open. If you think that there is any privilege and power or superiority in being the only, it's not. It's not. Mm -hmm. And at one point you are going to need the power of the people that look and feel and think like you to be able to do well in the industry, to do well in life. So when you get into a room, when you're the only, you knock down that door to make sure that that door is swung wide open for other great people to come in after you. That's yes, a must. Absolutely. Do. So I want to just say something to Wanda publicly. Um, <laughs> because this actually changed my vantage point in the industry. Back in, I think it was 2016, we were at a Women Grow conference and we were in Colorado and there were probably 800 so odd women. And back then the Women Grow wasn't as diverse of a bunch of women as possible. And I remember some random woman of color walking up to me like, be at this place at six o'clock. And I'm like, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I and I was just following random women of color to this place <laughs> in Colorado. And when I got there, Wanda had wrangled about 60 ish. I think it was the mo all of the women of color that were there at that event to basically have a networking or a meetup of sorts. And honestly, to just be around. And this is why I say, I'm not a kid, I'm 50 plus years old, but having five, so five years ago, as well in my forties, having seen that vantage point of not being alone, representation matters, representation whether you're a white matters. woman, a black woman, a Latin woman, what have you, seeing myself in this, in, this, in, in this little cafe, having dinner was literally almost life-changing for me in this space because I knew that I wasn't alone. You know, Gia had always been with me, but just seeing like, oh my God, it's like my family, you know, and it was, it was amazing. So I wanted to say thank you for that. And piggybacking on what Jill says, having a community helps, even if 
that community is two or three or five. Mm -hmm. yep. You know what I mean? Um, sometimes me yep. and my friends that I met here at Women Grow, we just went apple and hemp picking over the weekend. We formed a little community out of our community. So really representation matters, seeing yourself, help keeping that door kicked open is important and creating your own community if you can have a women grow in your backyard is just really really important you know so thank you thank you Wanda. it is i just wanted to say that. tanya i wanted to um uh, touch on something that you said about fundraising uh and yeah. I don't know, I don't, I don't know if either of you have gone through kind of that like very intensive venture capital fundraising, but I have. And I cannot tell you, like as a woman, having, you know, being talked at by tons of men all the time when you're raising money, like how challenging that was. And to to see very few women in the VC space in cannabis, I mean, you know, I know that's like more of a, a larger issue in VC, but to um yeah. You know, one investor said to me, he's like, the female entrepreneur, it's like so tired. It's like, oh, right. But the male is it, right? That male entrepreneur is tired. Um, <laughs> but it just, it was really hard to to be a woman and, and constantly pitching men and being talked at by men. And, um, you know, I felt like very alone in that process as a female in this industry. Um, you know, we were able to close money and, and that was amazing, but it, you know, there definitely needs, I think, be more support around that and continuing to lift women up and let them know like, yes, you can go raise, you know, millions of dollars. Um, and you can, it is, it is difficult, yeah. especially in this industry and in general, I think in, in industry wide or business wide, women have a, the smallest chance to get VC money than, than their male counterparts. I mean, it's like a smallest percentage. So it is difficult. It is difficult. And there are a few groups I will send. Like, I know of one organization called I Fund Women that creates communities for women to invest in other women. And there are a few other ones that I've seen, but they're not, they're certainly not cannabis focused that I've seen. The only one I do know is is actually ARC. Oh, yeah is doing something, a, a win program where they're doing mentee, where they're having mentees for fundraising stuff. That's the only one that I know of, just, you know, name dropping for, for our audience. Um, but yes, it, it, did you have any experience with that, Wanda? What? Well, money is difficult. We've been 10 years in the industry. Simply Pure was well known. We run an amazing dispensary. We have very little debt and it's still amazingly difficult for us to raise money. And I've got to tell you, it's because A, I'm a woman, B, because I'm black. And that's not unique to the cannabis industry. That's unique across the entire board. If you guys go to the SBA.com or SBA.org, I believe right now, there's a whole set of, um, of uh, numbers on there of how hard it is to raise money being a woman or minority for any small business. I mean, it's nuts. And then it kills me when I hear that some white guy, some 22 year old white guy, $25 million in California for putting a ID on the back of a napkin and somebody funds it. And I'm like, but I've been doing this for 10 years. I have a business. I've, I, mean, yeah. I, I mean, it makes you crazy. And if you keep focusing on that though, it'll make you angry. It'll piss you off and you'll get nothing done because that's what will live in your head, you know? So every time someone decides to bypass us and doesn't want to invest, I'm like, okay, great. See you. Bye. Um, and you just got to keep staying focused. And here's the other thing that I really want to say to women that we don't get sometimes is entrepreneurism. Remove the word failure from your vocabulary. There is no fail. Fail is when you decide to stop because you feel defeated. Um, I can't tell you how many times, and I don't want to say the word fail, but that we have been hit with challenges that would have ended my company. And I lay up and I sleep and I'm like, how am I going to fight through this? How am I going to fight through this? And everything from an investor that tried to take us down, that lied on us on social media and, and attacked us and attacked us and attacked us. I mean, to just not being able to get through. Um, we had construction around our for three years, major construction, closed the roads and everything else. People weren't coming. And you know, how do we live through this and how do we make this work? But entrepreneurism means that you make it work, that you figure it out. It's like raising a child, you know, when you pick up your little baby and it takes two little steps and then it falls and it hits its head, you don't look at the kid and go, oh damn, you know, you're a failure. We're, we're done trying. We're not helping you walk at all. 
you are not ready to walk. You know, you will never walk. You will never run. No one says that to a child, right? You pick it up, you dab its little head and you, and you put it back on the track again to get it to start walking again. That's how you have yes. to look at your business. Your business is your baby. Raise it. And every step of that baby's life is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge when it's a teenager. You know, now our challenge is not raising a hundred thousand dollars. I got to find ten million dollars. You, you know what I mean? And then one day I'll be looking for a hundred million dollars. So every step is hard, and the only failure is, is when you give up because you don't believe that you can do it. Believe that you can find the Absolutely. way. And that if you're looking for a job in the industry, the same applies. Mm -hmm. You're going to want a job really yeah, badly. Same me, it's happened to me. And they're going to be yep. like, nah, I'm good. And you're going to be like, but what? What do you, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, so, and that will happen to you over and over again. And then it probably not, not the right one for you. And then you move on and you move on. And yep. listen, it is worth getting into any industry you really want to. Um, but it's worth it. Yep. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, since I've been here, not only the connections that I've made, but the, the visible change that I feel like I've contributed to um, has been very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. Even like I'm a caregiver in my state. Uh, so seeing cannabis work as medicine for people is, is like amazing. Yeah. So we do need women in this industry because not only are women, I think, the hardest working people out here, but we also know how to do it with heart and I know people will think that that's, a, that's an occupational hazard, but it, I don't feel that it is, you know? Well, and that's changing as well, too. And I want to pull Jill in, but that's a piece that's changing now because when we start to look at what has not worked in 400 years of American history, the I must win, for me to win, you must lose scenario in business is wrong. Women look at things as win-win. If we work together, can we increase what we do together? Um, Jill, your company has helped out my company. Together we win. You know what I mean? So it's never, a, um, with women anyway, it's a different way of, of lifting all boats. Um, our ego is not based in, in crushing the competition. Our ego is based in not looking at you as competition, but how do we yep. work together? Just when I was a restaurant owner, no restaurant owner ever looked at the guy that's selling tacos and I sell steak. And I'm like, don't be going to his taco place. His tacos are bad. You don't want his tacos. No one does that in the restaurant industry, right? And even restaurateurs, we go to taco joints if we sell steaks. So in the cannabis space, none of you are my competition. We do what we do. You do what you do. And I support you yeah. doing what you do because I can supply the whole world with cannabis. Absolutely. I also think this, you have to be very patient in this industry. Maybe from the outside looking in, it looks like things are moving very quickly, but being on the inside, it's not moving as fast as I think, you know, people anticipate. Yeah. Oh, wow. Cancer is legal. Oh, wow. It's like moving so fast. You really have to hunker down and be patient. And that's yes. the only thing is, you know, an, an exercise in patience and also persevering. Man, I've persevered. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Just like Wanda was saying, you wake up, you're like, oh my gosh, how do I get through this huge problem that I'm facing today? You know, it's like maybe yeah, things are right. growing and it's so, yeah. it's hard. But I mean, anything, again, that's worth anything is. You know, anything you want is 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 worth yeah. waiting for. I mean, it, and. and and one of the, just looking at the folks asking about jobs as well too, one of the really things that upsets folks is when they come from another industry. Yes, you may have been a vice president at Coca-Cola and you may have made $250,000 a year. Your first job in cannabis will not be $250,000 a year. It will not, it won't be, and it's not going yes. to happen. So um, understand you're gonna have to get in there, build yourself up. It's a small industry. Um, you know, you're gonna have to work yourself up. It, it's, this is not corporate like, like GE, it, it's yes. just not going to be that way for you. So I, I want to wrap us up. Um, some people were asking, where do we find jobs on the East Coast? I just will say, um, no, <laughs> no, no kidding. Uh, well, we got MSOs here. There's jobs, the posted jobs, the banks, our lovely platform Man. is an opportunity. I do see yeah. some uh, stuff on LinkedIn. You just have to apply, uh, find smaller brands to work for. They're not going to post on those big things. Go to a community event, offer your services. I started at Women Girl because I was annoying. 
I'm going to be honest with you. I annoyed them so much. You need a volunteer. You need a volunteer. You need a volunteer. You want me to help? I'll go to Costco. You want me to go to Costco? I'll go to Costco. So literally my job was going to Costco. And then I worked up the ranks, but it was really because I was just annoying in the best possible way. You know, so so be per persevere. Annoying oh, women united. Yeah, we love that. Per persevere. Um, <laughs> If you need a gig, align with somebody and see what you could create. There's always opportunities to create. There's opportunities to align. We just all have to be open-minded and fight really hard for what we want, right? Any any closing words, Jill? Any closing words? I mean, you said it. You said it really well. Keep fighting. Keep fighting for. Keep fighting for that role. Keep fighting for a seat at the table. I mean, that's you know what we have to do now, and we are worth it. And always remember, you are worth it, and you are worth it to be there too. And shameless plug, um, I am hiring for an executive assistant. It's the person that is actually closest to me, that keeps all of my scheduling, that works with all of the political things that I do with the governor's office, with the tourism office. I'm looking for somebody that is um, responsible, extremely mature, that feels comfortable um, uh, in meetings on my behalf. Uh, and we're definitely looking for that person right now. You can um, apply at wandajames.com. You can apply at simplypure.com, um, or you can send me uh, a direct email, which I believe they have listed somewhere here on this. <laughs> oh, and in terms of thing. hiring, we are also yeah. uh, we're looking for mechanical, electrical uh, assemblers for our manufacturing team. What we are you in? We're in Colorado. We're in Denver. Okay, fantastic. All right, fantastic. <laughs> I'm, I'm coming over. Wanda. I'd rather work for her. I'm coming over for both of you. No. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. We hope thank you, you had a good time. Thank I had a blast. Thank you thank so much. You. I really appreciate you. And I'll okay. talk to you soon. Thanks, thanks. Right. Thanks, Bye. everybody. <laughs> thanks, thanks. All right. We are good. Are we done?